Okay, I'm back and this is gonna be a quick unboxing and first look at the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I got it here in the space black color. This is one of a couple of new colors. There's the space black, which is kind of a darker take on graphite. Um, I've had the graphite 13 Pro Max last year, which I liked. I kind of like um, uh, the graphite color. It has, it, to me, it's kind of understated, but it has a little bit of shine. So the space black, my understanding is that it's very similar to graphite, but a little bit darker. And of course, this is the Pro Max size. Um, I've had the 13 Mini the last year. I've also had the regular 13 Pro and even the 13 Pro Max. I've kind of had it all the past year and tried all the different sizes. So this year, of course, Apple have consolidated the sizes. So now there's only a 6.1 inch size and the 6.7 inch size. So I find that whichever size I'm using, I kind of get used to. Um, I know there's kind of concerns about the weight and how hefty it is and how easy it is to use one-handed but um, over time I feel like you know after a week or two whether I'm using the mini or the Pro Max I kind of get used to that size so here it is and on first impression it definitely is a darker shade than the graphite uh, especially here around the camera rings uh, these rings around the lenses are kind of a dark metal whereas with the graphite it was a shiny metal the rail is also a darker almost kind of black but yeah, that's it. It's pretty nice. And I'll put it side by side with the 13 Mini, which is the, I guess, kind of a true black or a glossy black. Actually, it's a midnight color, so it's kind of got a blue tint, but you can see how the shade compares there and even how the size compares. Obviously, it's a massive difference. And I'm kind of noticing, actually, the Apple logo is uh, bigger on the 14 Pro Max. And obviously, of course, the camera module is is much much bigger so that's how it looks on the first uh, first impression of course there is no sim card slot so i'll go ahead and peel the plastic off the screen lovely and here while the screen is off you can see the cutout for the true depth sensor and for the front facing camera where the new dynamic island software feature is so let's go ahead and go ahead and Turn that on and we can see what other what else is in the box. Of course, minimal packaging. So we have the USB-C to lightning cable. I personally am also looking forward to when Apple moves to USB-C for the iPhone, mostly for the faster data speeds. My iPad Pro has USB-C, my MacBook Pro has USB-C, and everything just moves a lot faster. So of course inside we don't have any SIM card removal tray anymore because it is only eSIM. Uh, sticker and some, uh, I assume, some um, warranty information and things like that. Usual paperwork. Fairly simple box, fairly simple unboxing. It is, of course, now a white box for even the Pro lines. Last year and previous years, the Pros used to have a black box, so kind of sad to see that go, but not a huge deal. So here, oh, here it is, <laughs> the first look at the Dynamic Island. Pretty cool. So I'm going to cut the video over here and set it up real quick and I'll come back with my thoughts and, you know, my initial thoughts on what the phone is like. Uh, before I finish completely setting up, I just wanted to quickly show my first little hiccup. Uh, when I did the direct-to-direct -direct transfer for the iPhone, the number for the eSIM didn't trans transfer over. It said transfer failed. Um, so now that I'm on the setup, I had to put in my phone number and the last four of my social to get a verification code from T-Mobile, which of course I received on this phone, which is doing the transfer, so I can't actually receive the text message code on the phone. I know the message has come in, I felt the phone vibrate, but I can't interrupt the transfer in order to see the code. So fortunately I have my iPad over here so I can enter in that code because I received it on the iPad. Six, that's it. Let's see if that does it but it's just kind of um <laughs> goes to show that um for most people they might not come across this problem of transferring their eSIM over or activating a new new eSIM from their physical sim i did happen to have eSIM set up on my mini um but just to show that there are some hiccups in the transfer possibly t-mobile has a lot of eSIM activations today for everyone else that has gotten their iphone uh iphone pros and iphone 14s um, but yeah, not as seamless as, you know, kind of popping out the SIM, putting it right into the phone. So that's kind of the first little hiccup about no longer having that SIM card slot. 
Okay, I'm back and all set up. So the eSIM thing uh, turned out fine after I got put in the, the code. Uh, a few minutes later, the number did transfer over. So now I'm all set up on this phone. And yeah, overall impressions is that it is pretty cool. The camera bump, of course, is bigger than the 13 Pro and the Pro Max, uh, which I don't have my 13 Pro anymore uh, in Graphite. I sold it in anticipation of receiving this phone. Uh, but I will say, yeah, the color is very similar, but it definitely is darker and a little more stealthy. Like I said, especially with the camera rings being more black, the back being a little bit more black, and especially the side rails. So I'll show what it looks like in the case in the umbra case pretty handsome look um, but of course because it's uh, not that kind of silvery graphite color you don't really see any of the rails coming out of the sides of the case but yeah overall first impressions are nice i'm looking forward to seeing what it's like using it uh, seeing how fun it is to use the dynamic island um, i did get a little taste of it while setting up because it shows uh, it'll expand and give a little check mark whenever something has gotten a face ID approval and things like that. Um, so yeah, and and of course the camera changes, which you know I've uh, I've seen a couple of YouTube video comparisons between the 14 Pro and the 13 Pro, and the differences from what I've seen online are pretty minor. So uh, we'll see if I notice any kind of difference in my day to day of using it. The 13 Pros I think represented kind of um, to me kind of like. Uh, sort of like a peak iPhone and that's what I said in my uh, 13 Pro Max review that it was peak iPhone because it was just such such a solid phone uh, greatly improved battery life greatly improved cameras the screen quality was improved compared to the, four, the 12 Pro line the 12 Pro's kind of had a yellowish cast to the screen but the 13 Pro line improved on that um, I like the colors I like the size options the fact that we had a mini at that point in time so um, I'm looking forward to see how the 14 Pro Max compares, in my opinion. So I'll be testing those things uh, over the next few weeks and I'll probably come back with a long-term kind of uh, thoughts. So this is it, 14 Pro Max in the new space back black color in the umber case. And of course I dressed it up with a screen protector as well. And oh yeah, you also kind of, um, oh by the way, there is a software update immediately upon um, setup. So I will do that in just a second. But here we get a preview of the always on display, which most likely I'm gonna turn off because I do use an Apple Watch. Um, so I like seeing the notifications on the watch. And if, even if it saves just a little bit of battery on the phone, I prefer to have the battery savings versus having the screen uh, kind of dim and on. So as you can see, like my wallpaper is still pretty visible. The widgets are visible. Pretty cool feature, but um, you know, um, I think I'm going to forego that. So that's it for my first unboxing and first impressions of the 14 Pro Max. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.